Hi, my name is Dr. Brian Gruber and I'm the founder of Integrated Orthopedics. In the shoulder, there's a, a piece of cartilage that, that surrounds the socket and we call that the labrum. Uh, there's many different uh, pathologies that can occur in the labrum. We previously have discussed anterior labral tears in one of our uh, previous videos uh, when we discussed shoulder dislocations. The slap tear is the tear that occurs uh, on the top of the labrum. The biceps tendon starts out as a muscle in the arm then turns into a tendon, and then that hooks on the top of the labrum in the shoulder. Uh, when that area gets torn, that's called a slap tear, and what that stands for is superior labrum anterior posterior. That's kind of the technical name for it. Uh, but we liken it, or we refer to it as a slap, and, uh, and, and also we talk about it as a tear at the biceps anchor itself. The slap tear really occurs in two separate groups, and, and the first group is the, the overhead athlete. So we see a lot of uh, slap tears in throwers, uh, baseball players, uh, softball players, volleyball players with the overhand hit. Um, and the reason that is, is the, the, this motion stresses that biceps anchor and you can tear that cartilage. We also see it in uh, injuries such as a, a traction type injury. So for example, an injured worker that falls off a ladder and tries to, you say, catch a, right themselves or, or catch a gutter or a tree limb, etc. the pull on the shoulder, that can tear uh, the labrum. Uh, so that's one group of people, or a couple different groups of people where we can get slap tears. The second group really is as we mature, we think that slap tear is the natural history of the shoulder. So if you did an MRI on say everybody that maybe would be 70 years old, you're going to see many slap tears that are called degenerative slap tears. So just over time, that tissue becomes a little more fragile and a little more prone to injury. So you have sort of the, the younger population, if you will, that it's a more traumatic type tear versus the uh, more mature population, uh, and that's more of a degenerative type tear. Typically, uh, there's a couple classic uh, uh, diagnostic uh, tests that we'll do uh, in the clinic one. A uh, very classic one is called the O'Brien's test, where you have the, the patient take their arm across the body and you, you push down and the patient resists that. That stresses the biceps anchor uh, and a pain is a, a positive with that. Uh, and relief of the symptoms uh, with the palm going up um, is, is also uh, helpful to, to diagnose this. Typically, it's, it's the diagnosis is confirmed based on MRI. In the younger population, such as the thrower uh, or the traction injury that I discussed, we typically like to do an MRI and then we'll put dye in the shoulder. It's a little more sensitive of a test that's done by the radiologist. Uh, as we mature, you know, typically in a, say a 70 year old, that is also confirmed by MRI, but you're not necessarily gonna put dye in that shoulder uh, because that, that isn't really the standard of care. Symptoms for a slap tear are uh, number one, pain. So patients will have pain. They will oftentimes complain of pain deep in the joint. So sometimes it'll be hard for them to completely articulate it, but they'll say it's deep in the joint. People describe pinching um, of the shoulder or, or that hurts because it pinches. Uh, sometimes patients will have mechanical symptoms. So they'll feel like their shoulder catches, it may give way, um, feel like it may be dislocating or we call that sub subluxing. Uh, so not frankly popping out of the socket, but patients will get those types of sensations. Oftentimes in a slap tear, patients will complain of pain in the front of the shoulder uh, where that biceps tendon is and even down into the biceps muscle itself. Uh, so those are some of the classic uh, um, uh, complaints that patients will have. Somebody should uh, be evaluated typically uh, after injury, you know, say one, obviously depending on the severity, uh, say, you know, if you can't get this settled down with, you know, ice, anti-inflammatories, activity modifications, and rest, you know, typically within two to three weeks, then you should seek uh, medical attention. The vast majority of treatment options initially are conservative care, uh, even in the, the, the overhead uh, athlete um, that may have a slap tear. So what we'll do is uh, oftentimes uh, we'll do a steroid injection to get the inflammation down. So that makes the shoulder feel better, but oftentimes there's underlying weakness of the shoulder, uh, scapular uh, muscles, uh, what we call scapular dyskinesis. So we'll get the patients into physical therapy as well. Um, 
then, you know, ultimately if uh, many patients are very successful with that, uh, ultimately, you know, as time goes on, you know, two, three months, you continue to be symptomatic, then there is a surgical uh, intervention uh, for that slap tear. So physical therapy, oftentimes it's somewhere between, you know, anywhere from six to eight weeks and um, uh, then you're decreasing the frequency of physical therapy and the therapist should be able to give you a home program that you can either do at home or do at the gym. The typical slap tear uh, in the, say, we'll use 40. 40 is a very common number in orthopedics. So under 40, we actually fix the slap tear. And what I mean by saying that, we actually put suture in there and we try to recreate normal anatomy. Uh, the, it's an outpatient procedure. It doesn't take long to do that. It's about uh, you know an hour or so. We do it minimally invasive, small poke holes. And what we do is uh, we uh, re reattach the labrum uh, back to the, the socket. So basically, again, we're recreating normal anatomy. Uh, we get patients into physical therapy typically within a week after that. Uh, and first thing, we get the motion, and then we get strength, and the typical recovery is somewhere between three to four months. As we mature in that older or more mature patient population that I spoke about, um, if, if those folks continue to be symptomatic, uh, what we do is we don't necessarily fix the slap tear because as we talked about before, we think that that's probably the natural history of that shoulder. So what we do is we, we uh, uh, snip the biceps tendon and we reattach the biceps. It's called a biceps tenodesis. Um, and it's a very, very successful procedure for patients that have pain that we think is coming from the slap tear or from the biceps in that patient population. Success rate for both the slap tear as well as the biceps tenodesis uh, is uh, excellent. Take home message with slap tears is the majority of these uh, conditions can be treated conservatively with significant amount of success. Uh, however, if, if you, the patient, you know, continue to have pain and, and it's something that the surgery is very successful, so I wouldn't live your life with, you know, painful shoulder from a slap tear uh, for fear of that surgery or, you know, for fear that you have a poor surgical outcome because the surgery, you know, works really well. However, realistically, most people don't, don't end up there, don't end up needing it, uh, but it is there and, and quite successful.